we just pulled into the campsite. First thing we do is start the stabilizers. So we have an auto leveling system. And as it gets going, oh, it's doing the front ones first. You can see they're down there and it'll start to auto level. This is a pretty level site. The next thing that happens, I actually don't know. We'll all grab this our part. water softener. Okay. I set the water softener out. Set it right here. Get it attached here. A lot of times I like to use a little silicone tape, but I don't have any. Water until it sees there's a little bit of a filtration there. I turn it off here. in here. Hello. Okay, so next step here is uh, we generally want to kind of ballpark estimate how much cord we're going to need. We got a nice uh, extender, but it does need a little bit of help here. So we kind of get this thing just enough to be able to get over there to the electrical outlet. Always easier to retract once you're over there, but it's a pain to have to come back and do it more. So, that in there, yep. over here. So when we hook up here, we always want to be sure that our, so this is actually only a 30 amp service. So, um, I keep a, a 30 amp toggle in here. This is actually a more official name for that toggle. But, Oh, it has to come all the way back. No, it has to come partially, partially back. I gave it too much length there. Oh, this is probably not going to turn out to be the best one. That's okay. That's how it goes. So I this, didn't it this, I keep a toggle here for this is for a 15 amp um, plug, and uh, off from here. So I keep this on because a lot of times at people's homes they only have a 15 amp, but it's nice to have that because if you're wanting to keep your refrigerator on, um, then you have it. This is a 30 amp plug, and this is a 50 amp receiver. So they make them in all different varieties. So like for example, if you had a 30 amp service, you might have a 30 amp 50 that goes to 50 amp, it, just in the event that you get into a campsite where they only had 50 amp. I've never actually seen that though. Um, so I think that'd be pretty low likelihood, but uh, you may want a 30 amp to a 15 amp in case you get to a campsite where you only have 20 amp or 15 amp service. But the 30 amp uh, will work for this. So we'll plug it in here to our 50 amp plug. And then here we'll go down to make sure first off that a lot of people don't turn these off and they didn't turn this off. And you know, you plug it in and that's really not great to do it that way. Um, I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit more. And we have a surge protector, right? We do. Which is this guy. And he... Yeah, pretty important to have a surge protector. You can have all kinds of different varieties, but... This one is a, is a south wire surge guard, the 44270. Tells me that the power is, so at this point we have not turned power on, so you can't see anything yet. But now we turn it on, and I don't know if you can tell, but oh, yeah. you, um, you can see here that the power is on. Um, we have a 120, uh, 50 amp, um, and here's a green light, green light, so it tells us that uh, our power is on, so we're good, we're in good shape. Um, so, that's that. Um, then of course we have our water and septic hookup. Nice part is this particular campsite has septic, which is unusual for state. Um, so,
you gonna leave it plugged? Or, yeah, you're just gonna set the gray up. Then we're kind of on unlimited water. If you wanted to do kind of nice. Uh, laundry or whatever. Yep. So there's a separate water uh, area to put the water out of over here. But I keep this pressure valve on. Um, probably at some point I'd like to do just a short hose that goes from here to the pressure valve and then I can mount it alongside here so that's inside and then I can do another hose over here where the water actually technically belongs but I do them both through the same hole at this point um, I'm a uh, pretty careful so that nothing touches so that the lip of this never touches the septic because this is your potable water so you don't want this to touch um, that up we'll do a field test make sure there's no significant leaks there we can see we got 60 psi uh, this is adjustable by the way this is a uh, uh, what brand is this Altera um, pressure valve and here I can adjust the pressure so I like that there um, at about 60 uh, depending on what resources you read some people do 50 you know, that's probably safer. The, the lower you can go, the safer you can go. But the deal with the 50 is that you don't get a lot of pressure. So if you're willing to push it a lim limits a little bit, then you're gonna do a lot better. So now we're on, these are our different settings here. So this is the Nautilus P3. And uh, each one of these configuration tells you different things. So dry camping is where we're at currently. So we're at dry camping, we actually have our pump. Uh, I can't even tell if it's turned on or off at the moment, but our pump was on. Um, and so white's down, blue's over, green and red are up. Pretty easy. We're not going to power fill our tank right now. We've got a third of our tank. We may power fill before we leave, depending on where we're going. But we are going to go to city water at this point, city inlet to fixtures. So we're going to turn green to the left, red's here, blue's there. Make sure our pump is off, and now we're in business. If we were to power fill our tank, we would turn the blue down. You can hear it now, it's beginning to power fill. Um, but we're not power filling. We don't need that at the moment, but you do want to make sure your pump is off um, And then there are two other features here is a winterize where you can siphon into the pump And then the second thing is here. You can get uh, a sanitize. So here's our septic. Nice part about some of the state parks is that they have uh, They have this metal uh, piece on the top Which is kind of nice because what happens then is it ends up being kind of a stabilizer there for your unit as opposed to having to put a rock on there this one's kind of weak, so you could also add a rock. A lot of times I'll add a rock there, and that way this can't really go back. Um, it's rare that you would have a problem, but man, if you have a problem, it can be a mess. So uh, probably better to just make sure it's safe. Um, so this comes off here, one trick that I've done in the past, you put a little paper towel there so if it seeps a little bit, it's not quite as gross to have to clean up. You should always be doing your gray tank after your black tank clean out. So most of the time it should be pretty clear. This isn't, shouldn't be raw, raw sewage, uh, but sometimes it is, depending on your situation. And that's about all I'm gonna get. So, well, we're gonna have to do a, a second piece, which is unfortunate. We had to pull so far to the side because we had so many branches over here that our slide out wasn't going to have room. But now we're a little bit further away from the septic. The other thing is if we're not going to just stay hooked up like this, if we just wanted to dump at the end of our time here before we're heading out, we have a macerator. So we can just kind of do a quick dump and in about, I don't know, three minutes we can empty the whole tank. Yeah, the macerator is really the way to go for one day trips typically. We're doing a one day trip, so a macerator is a nice way to go, but you also, it's hard to do anything laundry wise. And um, this is really the optimal if you can do it. Another trick I do is I close these up like that. Um, doesn't quite dry out as nicely, but then I can find both sides to them. But, 
So here's the macerator, what this looks like. This is our macerator pump and essentially there's a button here that allows the macerator to work. You can see inside of here what the macerator setup looks like. Uh, but like uh, garbage disposal for your sewage. It is. So I keep the macerator kind of tucked in there. The caps are kind of tuned up, got my gloves there. Now I can just kind of use that paper towel that I set out there for drippage like that. I'll show you an ER trick. We take our gloves like this, we bag the whole thing up like that. Now you don't have to touch it. So that is that. We're set up and ready to go. The last thing out here is the turn in on the propane, which is on the other side. By the way, I always lock everything up. It's not really paranoid so much as it is. Nobody's going to mess with my stuff and I'm not going to deal with the inconvenience of it. And they're not going to pop open if you forget about stuff. And they're not going to pop open. <laughs> but Driving on the road. The inconvenience of stuff is, is pretty can be pretty major. So um, depending on where you're at, you just can't find parts for stuff if people mess with stuff. And you know, it's kind of human nature. So, gosh. Okay, let's just turn this on for a moment here. That's that. I do need to fix that at some point. And now we go in and do the stabilizers and pull out the slides.